and reliable records. To find out how they kept these records, I traveled to the heart of China. This is Jinhua village in central China. It is in this bucolic atmosphere that I find remnants of another ancient Chinese technology that dates from the second century BC, paper. Villagers here in Jinhua earn their living by making paper the traditional way, sheet by sheet. Gathering the material they use to make paper is as simple as going into the backyard. The villagers use bamboo, which grows in abundance on these mountain sides. They say it only takes about one year for it to grow to this height. Workers cut the bamboo down, dry it, and chop it into chips. Then they steam the chips until they're crumbly and moist. Next, the bamboo is soaked in bleach and ground into a thick mush. Once the mush is white, they grind it again into liquid pulp, perfect for paper. Three centuries ago, the process took a hundred days. Now, it takes a week. Once they've suspended the pulp in a vat of water, they use screens to gather a thin layer and then lay the new paper out to drain with one sweeping, elegant motion. This family has been making paper here for 14 generations, nearly 300 years. It's a technique that takes a long time to master. This is not as easy as it seems. All right, let's see if we can get this, this turn around. Nice and deep. Give it some. Let it settle. That's it. It's a little lumpy. How's that? Good? No? Oh, yeah. figure out is how someone came up with this idea in the first place. It requires a very steady hand at this point. Otherwise you get lumps. Oh, that's not bad. Good lumps. Well as far as I'm concerned, paper making remains a mystery. <laughs> in the beginning, paper wasn't anywhere near as thin as these sheets drying on the wall. In fact, people used the earliest paper to make blankets and clothing accessories. Eventually, the Chinese refined the process and created a smooth, thin material, ideal for writing. A thousand years later, long before the West had even started making paper, the Chinese were already working on a new idea, the printed word. Printing was an idea that flourished around 1000 AD, once again, during the Song Dynasty. From then on, information could be easily duplicated and distributed. Qingming Riverside Park in Kaifeng. If you can look beyond the tourists with their video cameras and their cell phones, every detail in this park, the architecture and the costumes, is an exact replica of what life was like here in the 11th century. I'm here because scattered throughout this park are hints of China's technological past, at a time when Kaifeng was a lively centre of trade and commerce. And the reason why this park is so authentic is because it was modelled after a 16-foot-long scroll 
by artist Zhang Zedwan. He captured a snapshot of ancient Kaifeng during his lifetime, detailing Song lifestyle, costume and architecture. Today the park is one of the few places where ancient tools and techniques are still alive. Including the first methods of print, a simple process which revolutionized the intellectual world. What we're seeing here is the process of printing from a woodcut. Now, all a woodcut is, is a piece of wood with the image you want carved in reverse. You take ink, apply it to the wood, put on your piece of paper, apply pressure, and you have a printed image. Having come up with the woodcut, the Chinese then ran with the idea. They made small woodcuts with individual characters inscribed on the back. They had invented, in other words, movable type. It was another critical invention that arose during the Song Dynasty. But the reason movable type didn't take off in China was that instead of using a few dozen letters, they used thousands of characters, each one representing a different word. This obstacle limited the use of movable type, but printing continued. It was in China that the information age truly began. In the West, we're conventionally taught that printing was invented by Johann Gutenberg in the 15th century. And you can go into the Smithsonian or the New York Public Library and look at a Gutenberg Bible. There's a little inscription there telling you that this is the world's first printed book. Well, that's half true, but true only of the West. And once again, the West has a false sense of its own creativity. For the Chinese were printing books by the 8th century, and by 1000 AD, printed books were widely available. Beating Gutenberg by about 700 years. Not bad for a beginner. By 812 AD, the Chinese had combined two of their greatest innovations, paper and printing, to produce a third. It comes in all shapes and sizes, makes the world go round, and it is, of course, paper money. The Chinese mastered intense heat when they learned how to turn common iron ore into cast iron and, ultimately, into steel. The secret to achieving extreme temperatures for their famous porcelain was known to the Chinese for centuries. They created furnaces using refractory or heat-resistant clay tiles, which could withstand enough heat to transform iron ore. Able to pour this molten iron into molds, the ancient Chinese discovered the world's first cast iron and quickly put it to work in their fields. With wrought iron, you have to hammer out each item one at a time. But with cast iron, you can easily replicate products like this plow from a mold, again and again. Here's where the technology of cast iron had its greatest payoff. The Chinese created the cast iron plow, and soon it was being mass produced around the country. This design represented a huge increase in efficiency on anything that had gone before. For one, it could be produced relatively quickly and economically. But the real advantage was here, in the field. With a plough like this, he could pull the plough along with a fraction of the effort needed to pull a conventional plough. The part of the plough that does the work is known as the share, the point here. And with a plough such as this, you drastically reduce the effort you need 